I thought it'd be cool to go through my process of recording music. I'm going to be using Reaper right now, which is a DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation, if you weren't familiar. You're looking at this DAW right here, this thing that I'm in right now, and you're like, what the hell is going on here? I don't understand anything, and it's kind of intimidating. Uh, this is going to be for you, basically. All right, so this is Reaper. This is the DAW that I use. We're in it right now. So this thing right here, this is a track. So when you start a new project, usually it comes with a little track that's like pre-made right here. And this button right here, if you click it, first of all, if you click it off, it's not going to record. If you try to record, it's not going to work. So you have to click it, and now it says record armed. That means now you can record. All right, we're going to go to this little thing called a metronome right here, or other people call it a, a click or click track, whatever. Uh, right now it's disabled, it says. So we're going to click on it, and we're going to enable the metronome. And uh, what we're going to do, go down here, this is a little uh, play button. There's a stop, pretty self-explanatory, pause, this is the record. You can either press play, or I like to just press the space bar, that's like uh, a hotkey. Uh, press the space bar, and that'll play. Start playing the song. Alright, so that's... The sound that you hear is the click track. That's the metronome, which is really, really useful. You're probably going to be using that a lot. I do, like, all the time. Really quick, we're going to go down here. This is the, the beats per minute, the BPM of the track. So it comes at uh, 120 beats per minute. If you're not really sure what that means yet, that's okay. Just know that this is basically uh, the, the tempo of the song. So the higher the number, the faster the tempo, the lower the number, the slower the tempo of the song. Um, and so right now it's at 120 beats per minute. So if we play the track again, we hear the metronome. Okay. Three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the current tempo of the song. So that's basically what it sounds like at 120 beats per minute. So again, if I wanted to make it like slower, let's say, you just click that, type in 100, let's say, try it again. Again, it's slower, um, so pretty easy right there. Uh, this is the time signature, 4-4. Four, four. If you're not sure what that means, I can explain that in another video, but for now, we're just gonna stick to the basics again. Um, this thing right here, this is the master fader, and so this is where you can control the volume of the entire track that you've recorded. All right, so now we're gonna go up to the track again. Um, I'm actually going to get my guitar real quick so I can record something. I'm actually going to record something that's going to be in a, a song that I'll be releasing soon. It's an original song called Blessing of Darkness. So I'm actually using a program called Amplitude for my guitar sounds. So I have that up right here and that's all configured. Um, that's a whole other process of uh, configuring Amplitude and whatever. Um, right now that's what I'm using though. So I'm going to start the click track. Uh, you can click record here. Um, what I like to do is I like to just press uh, control R and that's just again, it's a little shortcut. Um, so control R, it'll start recording. press spacebar, it stops it, I'm going to click here, and this is going to be a really handy tip that I'm going to give you right now. So um, This is more just like a tool that I use all the time. So I'm going to click here, for example, um, actually we're not going to click there, we're going to click right here, and I'm going to click S, and so that's split, that means it just split it, and now we're going to click this part. I'm going to click delete, and so now what we have left is everything after that, so now we don't have that beginning part where I was just kind of like getting ready or whatever. So, so we're going to turn the metronome off for a second, and this is how it sounds now. <laughs> Alright, so recorded. Um, you can also do this. Just like really basic stuff I do all the time. <clears throat> Sometimes you don't necessarily have to do the, the split thing. 
um, you can just click here, like this is at the end of it, and I'll just drag it over here to wherever I want it to be, like maybe I just want it to go to there, and so it'll stop there now. All right. So now it starts there and it stops there. So the splitting thing is really handy, as well as just like dragging like I just did to make it shorter or whatever, just to cut stuff out that you don't really want in there. I'm going to show you another thing uh, when it comes to splitting and editing and stuff. So let's just say that you wanted to split like right here, press S. So like let's just say you wanted this part um, a little earlier, like let's just say maybe you played it a little too late or something like that. Like what you could do is you could shift it over a little bit so now it's going to play a little earlier. Um, and it's like what it's doing there is it's basically blending into the next track and so it's like a smoother transition um, than if you were to just do like a hard cut like that. It might sound a little weird so this helps it sort of smooth it out a little more so it sounds like a little more natural. Or you can, you know, you can just go crazy with it if you want. You can take an entire section out, just delete it, put that over here. So, I mean, I don't know why you would do this. I wouldn't do this in this particular situation. I'm just showing you this so you know what you can do. Definitely get into the habit of just clicking Control S. Like, whenever you do something, honestly, it's so easy to do. Because I've experienced way too many situations where, and I don't want this to happen to you, I, I've experienced so many situations where I forgot to save it or whatever, and then the freaking program crashed, and then I had to like start all over again, or start from like a part that was like hours ago or something like that, so you really want to get into the habit of control S. Like every time, just as many times as possible, dude, just like you really don't want to find yourself in that situation, because that can be really, really annoying. So anyway, um, so I want to go into this metronome again, and I click the metronome, and enable it and now I'm gonna right click it and this is uh, interesting you can start to kind of get into the little details of the metronome so this is the volume right here this is really really handy so. control the volume that's very handy um, there's a lot of stuff you can do in here like one thing the only things I mainly do would be the volume and also the count in before playback and also this one so this just means if you have this enabled count in before playback it's exactly what it sounds like if you want to play the song um, just playing the song in general if you have that enabled then it's going to count in it's going to count in uh, before anything plays you know so if I wanted to like play this song from here and I have that enabled then it'll start so that's it's pretty self-explanatory uh, we're gonna click that again um, another thing so I actually I usually don't have that one enabled I usually just have it disabled I don't really feel the need for it that's just me I don't know um, and then this one counting before recording that can be really useful if you like that I tend to also not really <laughs> use that one but I know a lot of people do and so you might want to do that uh, that can be really helpful uh, so if you enable it, count in before recording, it'll just it'll just give you a count in, <laughs> and then you start recording. Self-explanatory. So what we're gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna create another track. So you click track right here, insert new track, and now there's a new track. So we're going to click this so it's no longer armed, and we're gonna arm this one for recording, just so I can show you the uh, the metronome thing I was just talking about. So, if we, like, I was just talking about how when you click on this whole feature, the whole uh, count in before recording, I'm just going to show you what that's like. So, we have that enabled. You start recording, you can either do that, or I like to just do Control R. Counts in. And then you can start recording whenever you want. So, I know I started here when I was recording I started recording here um, if you wanted to start from the very beginning then you could do that count in thing that I was talking about with the record count and whatever uh, I just prefer to start recording later over here for some reason I don't know it's just a thing that I do but you could start from the very beginning if you wanted to I guess it just makes me feel like there's more room to do stuff 
over here if I wanted to. It feels like I have more flexibility that way. But we're gonna go back to the initial track really quick. And you have all these little buttons and this can get kind of in depth, you know, um, but we're not gonna go over a lot of the stuff yet just because uh, I wanna just stick to the basics like I was saying. So I'm just gonna go over like some of the things like we talked about the recording also, this is, this is the volume, so you just like, you know, turn it up, turn it down, it's going to make the track go louder or softer, you know. You know? Uh, I'm going to take the metronome off, just because. Other things like panning, so uh, if you're not familiar with that, it means that the sound that comes out of any given track like this track the panning is basically how much of the sound is going to be on each speaker or each headphone and so if I turn this so the panning is going to the left if I turn it like all the way to the left it's going to be on the left headphone or the left speaker completely because it's at a hundred percent if you turn it all the way to the right it's going to be the opposite, so now it's all going to be completely on this side of the headphone or that speaker. Um, you know, if you go like middle, it's going to be sort of half and half, like in between. Um, so let's try that. Just mess around with it. You hear that? And you might also notice that when you pan it like that, um, like the more you pan it, to one direction, it's actually like the quieter it gets. So it actually gets quieter, which is interesting. Um, if you have it right in the middle, it's louder. Um, just a quick little tip about panning that I learned from uh, my professor when I went to Temple University. And he was actually uh, a movie, like a film scoring professor. And it was a really interesting class. I learned so much from that class. Uh, one thing that he was talking about that he recommended that I still remember to this day is really interesting is that like what he liked to do is he'll pan things in such a way that he tries to make it so it sounds like each instrument is panned in a way that makes you feel like you're actually there uh, like on the stage like let's just say that like I'm the singer or something like that and you know the guitarist might be over here another guitarist might be all the way over there like way to the sides you know what I mean and the drummer is in the middle and so I'm hearing the drumming and the drums are kind of like where I am sort of like right in back of me so it's inter that was just an interesting idea just kind of like visualize it like that that can really help I'm not sure if that actually will work a hundred percent of the time but I feel like that is kind of a cool rule of thumb that you can go to if you're not really sure how to use panning yet that's like a good starting point I would say anyway so this is me self-explanatory just muted. Uh, this is the solo button, which basically means that uh, whatever track you solo, that's going to be the only track that you hear. So what we're going to do really quick is I'm just going to copy this. By the way, Control C is copy. That's the the hot key. I think that's what the term is called. Um, and then just I'm just going to click here on this track. I'm going to paste it. Control V or whatever, or you can just manually do it. It's just easier to do the hot keys. Um, so now we have two tracks, and I'm just going to do this so I can show you um, how you would solo something or like a situation where you would solo something. So let's just say that you just wanted to hear this track, but we have both of these tracks. What we're going to do is click, and then we're going to solo. So now this track is soloed, so all you hear is this track. Yeah, or you can do, you know, with the other track or whatever. So that, I use that all the time. That's extremely, like, really handy. Oh, here's a little thing. This is a repeat. So if you want, whenever the track ends, if you want it to repeat from the beginning, whenever it ends, then just turn on this thing called repeat. If you don't want that to happen, and if the song ends, you just want it to end, then turn off repeat. So right now it's off. Okay. Okay. So it just ended. Um, but yeah, if you pressed it and now it's on it'll repeat so so now it's starting again from the beginning if you wanted just like a specific section to repeat um, I just click here you know say you just want that to repeat over and over um, then you do that and then let's play it now press spacebar so 
See, that can be really handy if you want to do like different takes. Yeah, I guess I'll talk about the effects a little bit too, just because it's here. So, yeah, the thing that says effects, again, very self explanatory. This is where you go to add in effects if you want to add in like a reverb or whatever. So, yeah, I post new stuff every Monday and Thursday, so definitely subscribe if you're interested. And more content like this, so just let me know. I usually don't post stuff like this. This is actually the first time that I'm posting like a tutorial of how to use Reaper. Um, but if you want more stuff like this, just let me know in the comments. Also, I usually post uh, guitar covers and performances and stuff, and also do tips, so like guitar tips or other kinds of music related tips. I also just started a Patreon, so if you're interested in becoming a member, I'm going to put the link in the description so you can go there. You can get some really cool exclusive stuff that I only offer on Patreon. You can see my videos a day before they go public. You can get your name at the end of my videos. You can request cover songs that I'll do for you. And I do a live chat every month. And so definitely consider joining if you're interested in that. And uh, yeah, have a good one. See you there.